Hello. This video will show installation of uh, ZMF event and REST API server support. But before we start, there are a few things we need to prepare. Uh, you'll need a ZMF subsystem running version 8.2 patch 2 or later. Uh, you'll also need a an HFS directory into which you'll install Tomcat and the ZMF web applications. So I'm going to create one now. Um, uh, using OpenMVS, below our development structure, new CMN dev, and I'm going to call this one TC demo. And there we have it. Um, you need to set up uh, security profiles so that the uh, the Tomcat started task, which we'll be setting up as we go through the install. Um, when that starts up, it will be assigned a user ID with a, an OMVS segment. And assuming that this user ID is attached to the same group as the installer user ID, i.e. mine in this case, um, we need to set permission bits uh, on the directory we just created to make sure it's 775 so that the started task will have all the required access. So let's have a quick check on that. And... At the moment, it looks like 755 it is, so let's set it to 775. And there we have it. Okay, so um, the next thing you need to do is uh, download the installation bundle from the usual place and the support site or, or wherever you normally get your software from. I have mine already downloaded, and here it is. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is uh, extract the files from the zip folder. So extract all, and I'm just going to put them back in the same directory. And there we go, there's all the files extracted. Um, and of course, the first thing we need to do is thoroughly read all the license files. Um, but then when, once we've done that, uh, we can open up the upload instructions, which is a Word document, and uh, have a quick look at what we're doing here. So the end result of this upload uh, operation is to get the two web application archives, the WAR files, up into a, a target uh, HFS location on the mainframe. And um, the install stroke parameter library, which is a PDSE um, up on the mainframe. And there's a whole bunch of uh, instructions here on what to do. We've got uh, uh, some FTP input, um, an FTP batch file, uh, and we've also got some JCL, which will upload, which will do the receive of the transmitted um, JCL library. Um, so the kind of thing that we're going to be looking at is uh, updating, for example, ftp.input. And all these bracketed variables need to be filled in before we proceed with the next um, step in the process. Uh, to save time, I've already done this earlier. So I'm just going to copy in my uh, previously edited files. Uh, here they are. So the batch file, the input file, and the receive JCL. Uh, we'll take them up to our current directory. And we'll go ahead and uh, execute the batch file, which will transfer the WAR files and the exmitted JCL library up to the mainframe. So here we go. Now this is going to take a few minutes depending on um, the size of your pipe up to the mainframe. Um, there's about uh, 15 megabytes of data to be transferred. Okay, and there it is done. I'll just have a quick look at the, uh, the log file, make sure everything looks okay. And yes, transfer completed successfully. Transfer completed successfully. All good. So that part of the process is complete now. 
And if we swap to the mainframe, we can see the file that's been transferred up there. Um, it's this uh, transmit file. And the JCL required to receive the transmit file has been transferred to here. And we're now going to run it to create our install stroke parameter uh, library, which is going to be called this CMN dev TC demo blah 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 dot CNTL. So I'll submit that. And away it goes. Um, and there it is finished. So let's uh, have a look at the library itself. There it is. As you see, I've got a, an older version of it there, which I produced earlier. Um, and in here, we have a series of uh, members. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Tomcat using this member. Um, I'm going to add a job card which will work at our site. So here we go. That should do it. And then the only thing you need to change in this um, member are these settings. So the the this JC, int JCL parameter is this data set. So um, let's change that to this. And TC Home is the name of the directory where we have installed Tomcat, which in our case was CMN Dev TC Demo, the one we created early doors. Uh, and then we submit that and wait for it to run. And there it is finished. You finish with CC0. And that will have populated the TC demo um, directory here. So there's Tomcat and all its wonderful works below TC demo. Okay, so next we need to set some parameters. Um, we need to set the uh, port numbers on which Tomcat will be listening. And you need to decide which ones to use yourself. For, for us, I know it's 8180 and 8543. Um, let's save those away. Uh, and then we need to set the environment variables. And again, there's only a couple that, or three that need setting. You need to tell Tomcat where Java is. And you need to tell uh, Describe the home directory for Tomcat. So this is uh, you see them in dev dot tc demo and the same on the base. You see them in dev tc demo. And that's the environment variable set. This is the started task procedure. So we're going to have to amend this and then copy it out to a, a proc lib where it can be started from. So tc proc. And again, config lib is this PDS. So take a copy of that because this is where all our configuration members have been stored. So quote this quote comma get rid of. Uh, and the JSOS lib is where the JSOS batch launcher has been um, installed. Quite often you'll find it in sys1. S I E A L N K E, um, but on our setup we have it copied out to cmn dev dot cmn u dot linklib, and that's all you need to change in the proc. As I say, we need to put it into a, a library where it can be started from. Um, actually, I've already done this before, so I'm going to do a replace, and it's user.proclib, and it's uh, the TC8 is the name of the, of the started task that I've chosen for this. Replace, and that's it done. So the final member we need to update in this library is the ZMF Palms member. 
This contains parameters used by the web applications to um, customize the environment which they're running. Um, and the various parameters are listed in this member with a brief explanation of what they're for. Uh, to save time, I am just going to add in the ones that I've used previously, which are cut from uh, another library. Uh, and uh, what we have here is the identification of the ZMS subsystem to which we're going to communicate, both for events coming out of the subsystem and for REST API calls going into the subsystem. So it's this number eight, subsystem ID eight. Um, this name is nothing significant to ZMF itself, but it's uh, it's how this particular subsystem is going to be known within the web application. So we'll see these on panels, see this name on panels and so forth when we start accessing um, the, the, via uh, web browser. Um, the host variables uh, identify the TCP stack on which we're running, um, the local host here. The, the port here, this is the, the port on which ZMF can be contacted, uh, something configured in ZMF itself. Uh, it needs to match up because obviously we're going to be sending um, requests to ZMF via that port from the web applications. Uh, and this port is the one on which Tomcat can be contacted. Uh, so REST calls will come in via this port and then get routed to the REST web servlet. Uh, important to mention this last one here, the event file. This subscribers.dat is a database or containing information about subscriptions that you're defining to the event server. So um, when an event is emitted, who it's going to get routed to, etc. It's all going to be stored in here uh, and you need to uh, locate that somewhere where it's not going to get lost or overwritten. Uh, this is where I'm putting it, somewhere outside the, the Tomcat directory structure. So I put it in data here. So that's it for this library. Um, the first thing we're going to do is start up Tomcat. It hasn't got any web applications deployed to it at the moment, so all it will be is just purely starting up Tomcat. And if you remember from my uh, from earlier, uh, I called this started our SIRD TC8. So we'll start it up, and it takes some little time to get going. So we're just going to pause the recording while that happens, and. We'll just check it's gone up correctly. If I have a look in here, we can see that there's no error messages. Um, so Tomcat started up OK. Uh, and now we need to give it something to do. So we're going to deploy the web applications. So when we first uh, uploaded the, all this stuff, um, the web applications, the war files, were sent to a location of our choosing. Uh, and now we're going to copy them from that location into the directory that Tomcat is going to be looking for them. Uh, you can do that online, or I've got a batch job here supplied that can do it. Uh, and uh, I filled this out earlier. So we can see here that I, I uploaded the war files to u slash s downs. And um, uh, I'm going to copy them into the directory that Tomcat is expecting them. And this is within the web apps subdirectory of the installation directory. So we're just going to submit that. And that will run, copy them across. And uh, as soon as they've been copied across, there we go, uh, Tomcat will start to deploy them, as we can see here from these messages. It's, it's deploying the ZMF event uh, application first. It does take a little while again for these to deploy. Well, we're only talking about a minute or so, but to save time in the video, I'm going to pause while that happens. OK, so let's see how we've got on. Um, as the web applications start up, they write messages to DD names that reflect the, the name of the, the web application, ZMF REST, ZMF event. So ZMF REST has started up successfully. It all looks good. And ZMF event, the same. So that all looks good to go. Uh, the last thing to do is just test out the installation. Um, so we just go to a browser and uh, have a go at contacting the um, REST API server. So uh, here's the, the machine 
the server that we're executing on, there's the port 8180 that we use, and the context CMF REST, and we're going to list the APIs that are available. So we're contacting Tomcat, and Tomcat's kicking the CMF REST web application into action. Uh, here's a list of all the various APIs. Uh, before we can actually run it, we need to log on. So that's me, that's my password. And that's me logged on. And let's uh, have a look at this one, component, there's 49 of them. Um, let's just, so there's all the various variables you could add, you could uh, supply to this particular um, API. Um, we're going to go ahead and test this one. The variable value we're going to use, I'm just going to, there's only one component in this package, so I'm just going to use that. And now we can test the API, away it goes. It's contacted Tomcat, which has contacted the REST, the ZMF REST web server, which has contacted my target ZMF subsystem and gone to check the contents of the package I suggested, this one components and there's the results come back in JSON format. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the IVP complete and the installation is done. Thanks for listening. Bye now.